Will AI kill us all? And will AI take our jobs? And will AI eventually control every aspect of our lives and stare at us while we sleep? Most likely not. My name is Nicholas Fernholm and welcome to my channel. I am a public speaker and I help hundreds of organizations and thousands of people strategize and try to actually implement and use AI to create a better tomorrow. Uh, and in this channel, we will take a look at the more realistic perspectives on AI and how it will most likely uh, turn out for us all. So in this video, we are going to check out my five top predictions for 2025. So uh, 2024 has been a crazy year when it comes to AI. We've seen a bunch of new releases, everything from Gemini to uh, Claude have had a lot of different new models. And of course, the biggest one, OpenAI. They've not now most recently actually released their uh, ChatGPT 401 full release, which is really interesting. And it, they've also started to actually put on more functionality into the O1 model, which means that now you can use it with, for instance, the Canva model, uh, where you can actually have like a, an interaction with the content in itself. And we're probably going to do some tutorials about that as well. So 2024 has been completely crazy. And now we're getting into 2025. And uh, there's a lot of things that people are speculating will happen. So I thought that I would give my five cents in the conversation. So the first uh, prediction for 2025 is that, of course, AI will become more available in all of our personalized products. So for instance, your cell phone, your washing machine, I saw I saw today, a washing machine that had like the AI uh, preference for it determining if it should run in like 40 or 60 degrees uh, Celsius. Jim, I need that thing, stat. So uh, we will start seeing these types of AI functions in pretty much all of our products. And I think that this is actually something that, that I am looking forward to a lot because uh, for, for instance, when I set up all of my technical equipment in my studio, there's a lot of like technical bugs and problems which occur when you connect two different systems with each other that might not be fully compatible. And today, you and I, we have to go into different settings, go into a bunch of different Reddit forums, find other people who have had the same problems and then kind of copy their the way that they solved it. I think that that will become a problem of the past. Uh, these are typical things that AI would be completely excellent at doing. Solving these technical problems that we have in our digital uh, uh, world, I think that will be a great uh, thing for 2025. So my, my second uh, prediction is that we will see that the exponential trend of this technology will continue for 2025. It will, it might actually speed up, but not in the way that most people think. So the way that I think that the exponential trend will continue is that not only the technology will keep on developing, but what will also happen is that the user interfaces of these technologies will evolve rapidly. So what do I mean by that? Well, you could imagine that we have this, this great intelligence, but the kind of layer that connects us to this intelligence, to this incredible tool is fuzzy, it's unstructured, it's, it might not be permeable for us to actually get a hold of all of the different tools that we want. And that's kind of the user interface, right? How do we interact with these AIs? And I think that the, the Canva uh, function in O1 is a great example of the kind of exponential development of the correct UI for AI. Really hard to understand. Will develop a lot and that will actually help us use these tools in a more efficient way in 2025. So my third prediction for 2025 is that uh, I think that the EU will keep on falling behind and I think that it will become a lot more clear that the EU strategy to let the US innovate, China copy those innovations and then the EU regulates 
the innovations, I think that that strategy will become very clear that it's not functioning in 2025. And we will see that the economy of the European Union will keep on declining because we are not uh, innovating and we are not experimenting because we are just focused on fear and regulating and making sure that we feel safe or at least have a false sense of safety. So unfortunately, since I live in the EU, uh, I think that, that trend will, will continue and hopefully that will get a lot of backlash from, from us as, as citizens. So my fourth prediction is that sustainability will actually get quite a boost from AI in 2025. A lot of people are talking about AI as a pollutant. I think that it will actually be the opposite. So it does take a lot of energy, not only to uh, create, but also to train these models. Uh, also the, the chips that are being produced by mostly Nvidia, they also create a, a fair amount of carbon dioxide, but that is not the, the major footprint that AI will have when it comes to sustainability. It is all of the reduced transaction costs of doing business and creating value that AI will help us with. So you can imagine all of the, I think it was a billion prompts per day that ChatGPT is getting right now. And all of those billions of prompts that are coming in are is labor, right? It is value that is being created. Is it is a person who is asking ChatGPT to help them with this legal analysis or text instead of employing a lawyer who is doing that. And that lawyer has his or her own carbon dioxide footprint. That lawyer firm is creating a lot of carbon dioxide in themselves, right? So I think that that is going to be a huge trend for 2025, where we can actually start, hopefully, to measure the positive effects AI is having on sustainability. Uh, so that is my fourth uh, prediction that AI will actually help sustainability in the future. Now, the fifth prediction, and this is probably the, the largest one, is that agents are coming. Uh, we will, in 2025, see the commercialization of these agents. Now, what is an AI agent? I was about to ask that myself. Well, an AI agent is pretty much one of these larger models like OpenAI or uh, uh, Gemini or, 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 or Llama, for instance. What you do is you take these large LLMs and you fine tune them and give them the capacity to actually act in the world for you. Now, this could, for instance, be a mortgage rate hunter where I have my own AI agent, which I give access to my email. I give it access possibly even to my bank. And what I tell it to do is that I want it to find the lowest interest rate for my mortgage that it can. And I want it to contact every single bank in the entire world every five minutes to see which one could give me the best interest rate. <clears throat> now you could imagine how much value could be created by using one of these AI agents. And this is one of the like low hanging fruits that I see for 2025, where we will actually see these types of agents popping up and they will mostly pop up in the places where we can actually have the highest value created. And I think that interest rates and mortgages are, are one of the first ones to go where we will start seeing these agents. I think that 2025 will continue to be a great year for AI. We will see a lot of implementation being the focus for the future of AI instead of talking about all of the risks and all of the doomers saying that AI will kill us all. I think that we will see that kind of rhetoric be toned down and we will instead start focusing on the implementation, the value that we could create with AI. And let's, let's look at the future with a bit more optimism because I think that this will be great for humanity. So thank you. I hope that you like this video. And since we are a new channel, please like the video subscribe uh, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.